Hey guys, today we're working with a HP Elite 8200 small form factor machine. You can buy such a machine or a similar model for a very low price. Give it a good clean, upgrade a few key components and you've got yourself a very capable machine with terrific value. We will talk about the most obvious upgrades like adding a video card, more RAM or better processor, but we will also look at some of the more interesting aspects such as replacing the fans because the stock fans are often worn out or making ticking noises. We're going to look at drive base we can add for hard drives or memory cards and general tips and tricks to look after your HP small form factor machine. So the very first thing I did when I got my small form factor machine was give it a good clean. So from the outside, I recommend some of these items like isopropyl alcohol, very good for cleaning, also removing the thermal paste. You want to have some anti-static brushes. They are great to clean out the fans, some cotton tips to get into the nooks and crannies, um, microfiber cloth for cleaning the outside. And if you have an air compressor or an air blower, these are fantastic for cleaning, blowing out the insides of the case. The rubber feet on the bottom, they might be missing or in bad state. So what I did, I removed them all, cleaned them with alcohol. And then at the supermarket, you can buy these uh, felt pads for furniture and you just attach them to the bottom of your machine. To open a computer, you just remove the cover like this and off you go. Let's put the panel aside. After giving the machine a good clean, we have to remove the front panel here. There are some green tabs here. Just uh, pull them up and forward and off comes the front panel. Underneath the panel we can find some spare screws. These are very handy. We will be using them later to install some drive bay devices. Here we have the CMOS battery. It's a standard 2032 coin battery. I do recommend replacing them. You should be able to pick one up at your local supermarket. The next thing we're going to do is remove this uh, plastic device here. That's just uh, a channel to uh, steer the airflow basically. Let's remove that. So this exposes the CPU cooler. We will remove that and then reapply the thermal paste. And the next thing we want to do is remove the, the front fan. There are some tabs here at the front which you just need to uh, push in and the cooler should come out like that. Uh, pull it out carefully. There's a little uh, wire connected to the motherboard. So just remove the wire and here is the cooler. I'm also going to remove the power supply because we're going to talk about replacing the fan inside the power supply. So there's one cable here. There's another cable um, over here. Let me just get that one out. There you go. And there's one more cable here. So three cables, they all need to be disconnected. And then rotate the power supply to the back and then pull it a bit forward and lift it up. There we have our power supply. Okay, next we're gonna remove the processor cooler. There are four screws. You just need to unscrew them one by one. With a bit of paper towel, just remove uh, the majority of the uh, thermal grease just like that. But at, towards the end, we need some alcohol. So I'm just gonna spray some isopropyl alcohol on here and that will uh, get rid of all the thermal paste nice and cleanly. And we do the same thing on the underside of the processor cooler that also has some old thermal grease. So we use some uh, alcohol solution again and clean it up nicely. And now we're gonna reapply some fresh thermal paste I recommend a grain size uh, dot right in the center of the processor. And now we can reinstall the processor cooler. The orientation does matter. See this uh, gap here? This should point to the left side. Um, when putting the cooler back on and screwing in the screws, go uh, in the roundabout fashion. So I usually give it like one, two, three, four turns on this one and then one, two, three, four turns on that one. And I'll just go in a roundabout fashion until everything is uh, secured. There you go, that's all done. If you're interested in upgrading your processor, you need to check the product specifications on the HP website. It will tell you the supported processors of your model. In our case, the machine came with an i5-2400, which I'm keeping, but you can upgrade to an i7-2600. 
When I got this computer, the first thing I noticed was some ticking noise coming from one of the fans. And that is no surprise, these machines have been used for many uh, years and the fans apart from the mechanical hard drive is the only component really that has moving parts. So I was really interested in uh, looking at options to replace the standard fans. Now I wasn't sure which fans will actually work because sometimes there is some proprietary stuff going on. So I reached out to Arctic and they sent us a range of fans. We've got the F9. That one is fixed at 1800 RPM. We've got the F9 Silent, that one is fixed at 1000 RPM. And we've got the F9 PWM. That one can be controlled through the BIOS between a couple hundred RPM up to 1800 RPM. So to understand more about these fans, I basically connected this one to a ASUS motherboard. This fan has a four pin connector and uh, turning on the fan speed in the BIOS to full speed, it rotates around 3400 RPM. And um, in the BIOS of the HP, there is actually a fan control option. And if you set that setting all the way to the right, um, you will get the 3400 RPM and the machine will make quite a bit of noise. Then I wanted to check if the wiring is compatible with standard PWM fans. So on the ASUS motherboard, I turned on the PWM function and the fan did indeed slow down. I put together some diagrams that will show you what sort of RPM you're getting with the stock fan compared to the Arctic PWM fan. I then grabbed an Arctic CPU cooler which has PWM as well. I just wanted to see if the PWM function works and it does. So you can see here the fan spinning constantly and then slowly with time uh, ramping up. So we're going to go forward with the F9 PWM. The fixed case fans, they will work just fine. But I recommend spending a little bit more in getting the PWM model because then we have a bit of control in the BIOS. You do, however, need to uh, change the fan profile a little bit more aggressive because the Arctic fan tops out at 1800 RPM, whereas the stock fan goes up to 3400. So I recommend that you set the fan profile to middle or somewhere a little bit to the right hand side rather than leaving it all the way on the left. You want to make sure the fan blows into the right direction. It should be pulling in air and then through the CPU cooler. And there's a little diagram here with arrows. So the airflow goes this way and the fan should be turning that way. We also have the same arrows on the Arctic fan. The fan is easily removed. There are two screws. There's one over here which we need to loosen. And there's another one over here. Let's just quickly unscrew that one and then the fan should come off careful with the wire here that just needs to be removed but here's the old fan and now we're going to install the new fan just going to orient the cable so it's all in the same direction so just put that down and we're just gonna screw in those screws again one over here and the other one goes into here that's it. And next we're just going to grab that cable and wrap it here. There you go. And here we have the four pin connector. It needs a bit of uh, force, but basically just line it up and just wiggle it in a little, little bit with a bit of strength. And there you go. That's all done. And now we're going to install our new fan. Just be a little bit careful with that wire. You might want to use some cable ties to just um, keep it a little bit neater than what I'm showing right here but you get the idea. And next we need our uh, wind uh, channel, basically. So that one goes around this way. So you just push it in um, over here and that cables go into uh, this latch over there. There you go. So that's gonna be nice and quiet. And if your fan is ticking, this will make a huge difference. The second fan is inside the power supply. I'm not going to show you the whole process because I don't want to be responsible for anyone making a mistake and then burning down your home. But I have replaced it myself. And if you know how to use a screwdriver and a little bit about electronics, it's very easy to figure out. The fan is the same. There's also a four pin connector. So the process is exactly the same as with the front fan. The HP Elite 8200 has four memory slots. You can upgrade the RAM up to 32 gigabyte, which I've done in a previous video. Usually the machine comes with four gig of RAM or something like that. And I do recommend you take it to eight gigabytes. 
Now a few words of upgrading a video card and turning this into a gaming machine. And this is uh, one area I get a ton of comments all the time. So firstly, let's look at the slots. So we have a PCI slot here. Then we've got a PCI Express that's a 16X slot. This looks like a 16X slot, but it's actually a 4X. And this is a 1X slot. Now, if you look on the specifications, each slot is only rated uh, up to 25 watts. However, I have no issues with uh, graphics cards. I've used the GDX 1050, the 1050 Ti, Radeon 560, also 730s and other cards. And I believe what HP is trying to say is that uh, the total shouldn't be more than 100 watt or something like that. But do keep in mind that officially um, the graphics card is rated up to 25 watts but as I said I never had an issue and I don't uh, know anyone else who had an issue with using video cards in this machine. I also get a ton of questions regarding the power supply. So these power supplies are proprietary you can't install a standard ATX power supply unfortunately they are rated at up to 240 watts and look that doesn't sound like a lot however I've uh, fully upgraded this machine with 32 gig of RAM. I upgraded the processor to an i7, uh, put in an SSD and a second hard drive and a GDX uh, 1050 Ti. And at the wall, the highest power draw I saw was around 130 watts. And you have to keep in mind that's at the wall. So the power supply has a bit of inefficiency. So very likely it's only pulling around 110 or 120 watts, which is half of what this power supply is rated. So the bottom line is, the power supply is, uh, has enough power to comfortably handle all the upgrades that you throw at this machine. Now let's talk about drive bay devices. So this machine, we've got a three and a half inch drive bay here and a five and a quarter inch drive bay at the top. One of the shortcomings is the 8200 doesn't have USB 3.0. So one upgrade that you could do is uh, get one of these. This is a low profile PCI Express USB 3.0 card. There are several models available. Um, the thing to look out for is that this one does not require external power. So it's a lot neater for the wiring and it's got a USB 3.0 header at the back and that header lets you connect other bay devices. For example, um, I like using this drive bay here. You can get this from eBay and I will put a search in the description that you can run. Um, I don't want to uh, single out a, a single seller and it does depend a little bit what region you are but that's a really nifty drive bay so you can put a two and a half inch um, drive at the top you can put a, a three and a half inch drive at the bottom there's an on off switch here it's got a LED for the drive activity but it's also got two uh, USB 3.0 ports here and that's the USB 3.0 connector so that goes in the back of the card you just plug it in like that and what else have we got here we need we have two uh, SATA for your hard drives and you need to connect one SATA power connector uh, into here now there are more options if you don't like uh, this drive bay and you want to go with something more uh, like a better brand you can get something from IC dock this one takes a two and a half inch drive and a three and a half inch drive but it doesn't give you USB 3.0 and then you could use the uh, second bay for one of these that will give you USB 3.0 so that goes into the three and a half inch drive bay and also has a USB 3.0 header here at the back and finally you could also go with a memory card reader uh, one of these uh, also quite cheaply available on eBay this one is only USB 2.0, so it comes with a you know, USB 2.0 connector. And these drive bay devices, they need to connect to somewhere. So we have a total of four SATA ports. And for the hard drives, I'm using the blue one and the gray one. I did run into an issue with one of the hard drives not showing up in one of the other ports. So it is possible that one of the other ports is only for an optical drive. So um, yeah, worst comes to worst, just use the blue one and the gray one for your two hard drives and that should work just fine. And then over here we have two uh, USB 2.0 headers. So these are standard headers like any other motherboard. That's where you can connect a USB 2.0 card reader for example or any other uh, USB 2.0 device. And two more quick tips. When you turn on the machine and you press escape, just keep tapping that escape key. It will uh, launch a menu which will 
let you go into the bars, run some diagnostics and also open the boot menu. That will let you boot from a flash drive, for example, with Windows 10 on it to install Windows. And the other tip is uh, security related. Go to the HP website, have a look if there's a BIOS or firmware upgrade. Uh, I believe when I looked recently, there was one from June 2018, so quite recently. So uh, do uh, install those BIOS and firmware patches to keep your machine nice and secure. And that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you found it interesting. I'll try to look into aspects that are usually uh, not covered. Usually you see uh, people upgrading the video card or, or some more RAM and that's about it. But having a nice and quiet machine that's clean and everything, that is also quite important. So I'm going to order myself a few more of the PWM fans. I've got uh, two HP machines which want to upgrade the fans, uh, both front and in the power supply. And yeah, so that's something I'll do. And any questions you've got, guys, uh, anything you've seen, leave them down below in the comments. Always love hearing from you guys. If you found the video interesting, you want to see more content like it, why not subscribe if you haven't done so already? Click on the uh, like button, click on the notification bell to get future updates. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.